When I first came into this field more than 20 years ago, we were incredibly ignorant. The big mental hospitals were closing and with them the industrial therapy workshops, but we were still prisoners of an outdated mindset in which we assumed that the best we could do would be to move sheltered work out into the community and make it look more like real work in the vain hope that it would prepare people to make the jump into employment. Needless to say, the results were disastrous. And we simply created new institutions from which less than one person in 20 escaped into real work. Even when we started to dabble in supported employment in the early 90s, learn from our colleagues in the learning disability field, we were still making it up as we went along. It wasn't until the mid-1990s that we started to look more closely at the evidence base that was developing in the United States around a version of supported employment called Individual Placement and Support, or IPS, which seemed to be strikingly more successful than anything else that we were achieving. It was then that we started to become familiar with names on research papers such as Bond GR, Becker DR, and of course Drake RE. Now, more than a decade and many papers later, including a number from researchers in the UK, some of whom are here today, IPS is acknowledged as the basis for evidence-based supported employment in both our countries. And although it's not as widely available either in the UK or in the US as many of us would wish, Nonetheless, it provides the foundation, at least over here, of official government guidance on employment services for people with mental health problems and will undoubtedly be developed further in the next decades. In fact, when we look back on this evening, I think we may well conclude that it's a key moment in what Michael Gladwell calls the tipping point, that mysterious threshold when beliefs, ideas, trends and social behaviour tip and take off and spread like wildfire. I certainly hope so. So, Bob, no pressure. Over to you. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate the warm introduction. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be back in the country that my family uh, comes from like many Americans, and uh, to see old friends here. Uh, I also would like to say from the beginning that I'm envious that you have uh, such wonderful think tanks and policy centers as the Sainsbury Center, and I wish we had uh, a comparable organization in the United States. In the interest of uh, full disclosure, I want to say from the beginning that I'm not a vocational specialist. Uh, I get into this field uh, uh, honestly in the sense that uh, I come from a family that uh, is riddled with mental illness and so at least three generations of uh, people in my family have suffered from serious mental illness and I'm sure I was destined to do the work as a clinician and researcher that I've done for the last 35 years now uh, and I really only began to get interested in vocational services because uh, after about uh, uh, 15 or 20 years in the field, I couldn't ignore any longer uh, the fact that my patients were always saying they would like to go back to work and they wanted a meaningful uh, role for themselves uh, in life. And I thought, well, of course you do. When I look at my family members, that's what sustained them and helped them uh, towards recovery uh, over the years. And so in about 1990, uh, we uh, launched a series of studies to try to uh, figure out how to improve vocational outcomes. And I was very fortunate uh, from the beginning to uh, uh, meet two people who have become my closest uh, colleagues over the years, uh, Deborah Becker and Gary Bond, who were already interested in vocational services and were kind enough to teach me uh, what we knew about the field uh, so far and have been uh, kind enough to be on the journey with me for the last 15 or 20 years as we've hopefully uh, moved this field forward a bit. But what I'll do tonight is, is first talk about the current status of supported employment. Um, and, and here I really should say from the beginning that uh, as a researcher, I, I'm convinced at this point uh, 
that this is one of the only effective treatments and clearly the most effective treatment that we have for serious mental illness. It's much more than a vocational uh, endeavor. In following people for 30 years um, and in following uh, uh, patients who are in dozens and dozens of research uh, studies that our center runs, uh, it's, it's totally clear to me at this point uh, that there's nothing about medications or psychotherapies or uh, rehabilitation programs or case management programs or any of the other things that we study uh, that helps people to recover in the same way that uh, supported employment uh, does. That doesn't mean that we've had success with everybody and I'll try to give you a feeling for that. Um, but it does mean that uh, for a significant portion of people uh, we've had tremendous uh, success in the sense of helping them to get out of the mental patient role and recover a meaningful uh, lives.